March Madness meant something a little different around here at Twin Cities Orthopedics Performance Center. The Vikings are coming together with their 2023 roster. We saw some free agency moves over the last couple of weeks. Here to talk about them in studio with me is Pete Bursich, Vikings radio analyst and Vikings.com's Gabe Henderson. Guys, have you been able to map all this out and keep up with all the moves that have been going on? <laughs> yeah, I've been able to. And then what's nice is to get the opportunity to watch some of these guys on film. And, and yeah. you know, you know, you know what you're losing in guys like Dalvin Tomlinson, but to see some of these other guys step in, it's – it's uh, it's huge, and I think some of the talent that we brought in is going to fit really well. Yeah. Dave, does it give you a picture into what the staff wants to send this the roster's direction towards? Yeah, I think the the word to use is strategic. Mm -hmm. Everything has been smart investments, uh, restructuring here, paying a guy one or two years here, and Quasi, we're starting to get, I guess, get a fill of his identity of what he wants this Minnesota Vikings team to be, and that's winning right now. So I love it. Well, the defense will look a lot different now under new defensive coordinator Brian Flores. The latest name added to that group, Dean Lowry, former Packer. Pete, I'm sure you've seen him yeah. a couple of times yeah, here and there calling the right. games. Uh, how do you think he'll fit into this Vikings um, line? You, you take a look at statistically the, the weakness of this defense was the running game, and I think Dean Lowry is going to be a big step in helping shore that whole thing up. You know, they, they're going to want to – I don't know if it's necessarily a stop the run mentality first, you know, nowadays, but uh, Dean's definitely going to bring that in. He's a, a space eater. He's a guy that, uh, uh, he, you know, he's not going to be coming off the edge and, and doing a bunch of sack dances, but he's going to be there play after play and hopefully playing on the other side of the line of scrimmage. I think we've kind of lacked that up front. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's big time. And when you see, uh, if you read Dean Lowry's scouting report, everyone says he has heavy hands, which means he gets his hands in the offensive guard fast and pushes him back. And we need that for this Minnesota Vikings defense that was in the bottom half or bottom five when it came to stopping the run last year. Not only does he provide that element of heavy hands, but availability. He started over 70% of his games in the NFL. So having that sure defensive tackle or defensive end on this Brian Flores defense, that makes us better immediately. And his experience is something yeah. to, especially experience here in the NFC North as well. I think when you fit him in next to Harrison Phillips, you needed to find somebody that could really complement him. Yeah. And while there is a lot of youth at that position, it's good to see someone bringing, like you said, the starting experience to this front. Now, several faces, well, actually, switching it up without saying Lowry, because there have been a couple of new faces, and, and we know he is an exciting one. Who would your most intriguing new addition be, Pete? I think Byron Murphy, for sure. I think he's, a, he's the best ad that we've had. Um, when you take a look at Byron Murphy as a pure cover corner, we haven't had a guy like that here in quite some time. And by that, I mean someone that could just consistently man somebody up throughout an entire game. Mm -hmm. And the other thing I like about Murphy is his flexibility. He, you know, people talk about, hey, you know, just lock a corner on somebody, let them play against them all day long. It's easy when you do it man to man, but when you're doing it in zone and the receivers can move around, sometimes you're playing corner, sometimes you're playing nickel, sometimes you're playing a linebacker position. And Murphy's shown that on film. He's very, very smart. He knows yeah how to fit in the zone coverage side of things. Because if you just line up that way, then the quarterback knows right away it's man-to-man, -man, right? I got Justin Jefferson on the inside, and there's Murphy, so it's got to be man-to-man. -man. He, he, he fits in the system very well. Um, he's physical when he needs to be. Uh, but I think from a pure just talent coverage standpoint, we haven't had a corner like him here in okay. a long, long time. Yeah, I would just sum it up into three words. Youthful, explosive, versatile. Youthful guy just turned 25 early this year. He's already got the fresh legs under him still. And then explosive, he can play inside, outside. He ran a four, I think a four four at the, at the combine. And then his game speed is just something that doesn't show up on the stat sheet. And then my last thing is just versatile, versatile. When you look at just him playing, he can play nickel, he can tackle, he can play outside. If you need him at safety, he can do everything you need him to do. I think that, that adds so much value to this Brian, Brian Flores defense and making this Minnesota Vikings team good this year. Yeah, he was the piece a lot of fans were looking for when they announced Brian Flores as yeah. the new defensive coordinator. I do like the intriguing uh, addition of Josh Oliver in the tight end room. I think everyone was a little shocked at first. And Gabe, we've talked about this in the podcast. An offensive signing right yeah. out of the gate, like panic button, not so fast because you need to make sure you shore up your run game issues. He is known for his run blocking. And that addition to me, I think, really stands out as to making this whole 
offense run. It is, and, it, and it is, and in this day and age of the NFL, where you see a lot more of the three four. Um, or yeah. if you do see a four-man front, they, it's, they call it a wide nine, or you put the defensive end outside the tight end. That's the mismatch that they're looking for, right? When you play a three-four, it's a physical style defense. Your outside linebacker has to win against the tight end blocking 100% of the time. Mm -hmm. Well, now if you've, you've got a tight end who can actually hold his own and take care of some of these defensive ends, take care of some of these outside linebackers, now you, now, now you really, really, I think, it doesn't matter who's at running back as much as when you have a guy like that in this offense with the three wides as much as we do, that tight end position in the running game becomes mm -hmm. extremely mm -hmm. important. So it's not just that, but it's, the, you know, again, the defenses that we're seeing. So you need that physical presence at that position, and it's really going to help out the running game. For sure. We've seen a lot of new additions, but let's talk about some of the ones that are coming back to Minnesota for another season. Gabe, what is your favorite re-signing so far? Favorite re-signing so far is Alexander Madison. He's been uh, available back. You know he can tote the ball when he gets the opportunity. Every single game that he started in those situations, he's either had 50 plus yards. His last couple of games that he started against the Detroit Lions, he had 100 plus yards in both of those games. When given the opportunity, Alexander Madison will succeed. He's already a good locker room guy. We're not sure what this running back room is going to look like this year, but the fact that Kwesi Adolfo Mensa said, Alexander Madison is our guy. We want him in this locker room, on this team, in this meeting room. That says a lot for what his future can be for this Minnesota Vikings team. He's also such a contributor on special teams yeah. as well, which is great to see. And Pete, your favorite <laughs> re-signing well, it's not I, Madison. I'll say, that, yeah, I'll say not, you know, not Alexander Madison. The one guy that um, I'm glad we brought back was Kairos Tonga. Mm. And mainly because he did, he, had, he wasn't really anywhere. And then he shows up and he starts producing and you see some production out of a, uh, out of a guy. Um, I like that. I like he's, he's on the ascent, even though he's, he's not a rookie, so to speak, or a very young player. So I think there's potential there. And I just love the way that kid plays the game. Mm -hmm. and, and we need as many big bodies in the middle of this defense as we can get. So I was happy to see Karis Tonga come back. I'm going to have to show some love for the special teams, guys. I was really excited to see that that trio stay together yeah, yeah. as they kept Greg Joseph and Andrew DePaula. You got DePaula, an all-pro, Pro Bowl uh, long snapper, and then Greg Joseph with record-breaking kicks this season. Yeah. Of course, we'd like to see some more consistency yeah. in the extra points, but great to see that unit back together again. And then I guess, I know we did talk a little bit about Kyrus Tongo, which I think alludes to this next question. Which returning name do you think will make the biggest leap this next season. So I'm going to give Pete a second to think of maybe another name. Yeah, you like put game. your head. <laughs> Pete put his head down. He started scratching his leg. He's like, oh, man, there's so many guys that came back. The easiest answer for me is Garrett Bradbury. You bring the entire band back on the offensive line, and Garrett Bradbury was that missing piece. Your left guard, your left tackle, your right guard, your right tackle, all those guys are still on the contract. Going into this offseason, I was like, well, do we have to address center via uh, uh, NFL draft, or do we just get a guy in free agency and we have to, I guess, build him up to learn the system? The fact that you bring Garrett Bradbury back, coming off of his best season as a Minnesota Viking, that only gives him that much more added juice, not only to block for Kirk Cousins, but to be back with his guy. So uh, I'm, a, I'm a big guy of, of unity and community, and I guess that, that offensive line room is going to be back intact. So Garrett Bradbury, so happy to have him back. I'm going to give you a couple names. In, in right. I think first off, uh, Brian Osamoa. Look, the mm. way the team stands right now um, in the, you know, through the draft, he, he's the starting linebacker. So I think because of that fact, yeah. he's going to show, you know, he, he could show a lot, of, uh, a lot of, of great improvement. And I think uh, he's done that. He started out as a special teams guy, and by the end of the season, he was getting in there in certain packages. So I love Brian Osamoa. I hope, you know, I, I, I would love to see him take that next step and be the starter there. Um, Andrew Booth's another guy that I think we need another corner. We need two more corners. We need three more corners. Andrew Booth, due to injury and some other things, didn't show a lot, wasn't able to show a lot last season. Uh, and finally, K.J. Osborne, because he finally he might get his chance to be the number two, mm -hmm. depending on how the draft goes. But he might get his opportunity to be the number two receiver. And if that's the case, then he's going to have a lot more attention, a lot more passes thrown his way and could have a really, really big season. A lot of youth on this team ready to take that big step. And speaking of youth, the draft obviously coming up in 
a very short time, really. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I feel it's like tomorrow. we're blinking. Yeah. We're like, it's like a month yeah. away. So with the move so far that you've seen in free agency from this Vikings front office, Pete, where do you see the Vikings addressing the main – or what, what need do you see the Vikings addressing in the draft? Well, and I, I look at it this way is – you know, who would you draft with 23, 23 overall mm -hmm. that would come in and be a starter right away? I think the linebacker position is 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 one of them. Uh, the corner position is another. So I think, you know, those two those two spots you need you you need some bodies. Interior defensive line, I think you, is is another opportunity. If, if you get a first rounder in that position, he's the right guy. Then he might come in and and start on day one. I think defensively or offensively, excuse me. You're pretty well set, you know, and you might have some competition for a number two receiver. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But other than that, you know, I, I, I think that the offensive side of the ball is pretty well set up. I think the Vikings have done everything that they could do to go best player available in the draft so far. So if there's a wide receiver there, I, I'm taking him. Why not? You see all these other teams that are making these big moves or having these explosive offenses. They have a solid wide receiver, no, wide receiver one, a solid wide receiver two and a three, and then the tight end. So Kevin O'Connell, we know he wants to throw the ball. In L.A., he threw the ball, what, 60, 70 times a game? Last year, he threw the ball 60 times a game. Why not go wide receiver? Yeah, you probably do need a cornerback, but Byron Murphy, you got the, the ascendance of Andrew Booth Jr., and then the other guys in that room. I think best player available is the way the Vikings should go in the draft. I'm going to have to throw a little wild card out for you guys. Don't, because... say, don't say special team. No, I'm joking. <laughs> right. No, no, not that predictable. Uh, when you think of this, this offense, Kirk Cousins is the guy. He is the quarterback. Mm -hmm. What's, what happens down the line? You know, I don't think the Vikings have seen very often a quarterback in that room that they've brought up and, and is now the starter and is for years and years. And that's mm -hmm. something that you get really lucky with when you take gambles in the draft. There's a guy by the name of Will Levis who <laughs> has a big arm. He's got playmaking ability. His offensive coordinator yeah. is familiar with Kevin O'Connell. Yeah. You can draw your own suspicions between just those connections alone. If you go up, try and get a guy, he's, he's under Kirk for a few years. Maybe that's a, a dice roll you take a gamble with. It's just a little wild. Because I, I, I do agree with the yeah. defensive. Yeah, point, and, and but. I don't disagree with you on that. No. I mean, have it's a just guy, where you want to go with that. Yeah. Right. I mean, Kirk's 35, so the Kirk's mm -hmm. succession plan has to be in the back of those people in leadership's mind. What are we going to do if this happens with Kirk? Yeah. What are we going to do if this happens with Kirk? So drafting a guy, I mean, at the first round or the third round, that, that should be a possibility or an option on some of those guys' mind. And the, one, the other point, I think, with all this is, is – the experience. I mean, we've we've drafted quarterbacks here in the past. They haven't all worked out, but Kevin O'Connell knows quarterbacks. Yeah, right? he knows this offense. He knows you know. And so, I, in that respect, because it's the hardest position to get right. Mm -hmm. It's the hardest position to play. Hardest position. One of the hardest ones to coach, um, and then to project talent or project success. And so, um, I have a lot more trust in in Kevin O'Connell and what what his knowledge base of that position mm -hmm. is to go find a guy. You know, maybe in the second round, maybe in the third round. You know, and he's okay. going to have time to develop. So, mm -hmm. um, at some point, I would like to see them, yeah, address that position as well. Yeah, I think they'd have to give up a couple of picks in order to grab that guy mm. up there. There's not, yeah. to not not too deep of a quarterback draft class this year, but there is one for 2024. But you don't want to be on that top end of that draft after the 2023 <laughs> season. So, uh, be tough. may not be that That'll helpful. Be so. yeah. <laughs> well, we still have plenty of time to sit here and dissect that for the next couple of weeks. And we will be doing that on Vikings.com. You can continue to follow our Vikings free agency tractor online at Vikings.com. Stay tuned for more Vikings Entertainment Network work coming your way throughout the coming weeks leading up into the NFL draft.